big. I wanted to be a movie star. I wanted to have a part that I was building. Watch the enemies. You see them driven before you? And get an imitation of the women. I'll be back. I was one of the biggest action stars of all time. Come with me if you want to live. Stick around. Swords are cool. But I am bigger dreams. Good morning. I put the run for government. I will look to the future and I will look to the dreams of the people. Give back and change the world. Trust me. What an intro. Let's hear it. out there. Matt, what's it like when you come to the UK? What kind of reception do you get? What do people say to you? Well, first of all, let me just say that I love the UK. I love you, Annie! <laughs> and then I, I tell you why. I started my bodybuilding career in England. In London, everyone said you would never ever be able to get in the movies. He says, you're too big. That's not what they're looking for now in Hollywood. And uh, you know, that was maybe in the 50s and 60s, the Hercules movies, but not now. Now the new, the new sex symbols are like Dustin Hoffman, Al Pacino, Woody Allen. It's like different to you. I mean, it's like, uh, it was like, it's impossible. You, you, they, this is the new guys, this is what you need to look like. And I said to myself, I said, well, I'm never gonna look like that. That's for sure. <laughs> but I did not give up. I did not listen to the naysayers. And when they said, you know, my accent was too much, that uh, people are scared of the German accent, and that, that they would not be, uh, become a leading man, and my name was too long, Schwarzen, Schnitzel, or whatever. <laughs> uh, they, they couldn't figure that one out. So there was just, everything was no, no, no. But the bottom line was through hard work and uh, not only training now, but also practicing the acting and going to English classes and going to accent removal classes. And uh, I mean, that person should give me his money back. <laughs> the money back. <laughs> but I mean, in any case, the bottom line is, is it took a lot of work, I worked hours and hours every day, and eventually I worked my way up and I started doing movies, and uh, you know, and we created our own genre. Not only did we just do movies, I created a genre, which was like the first time that we saw action movies with, uh, with the leading man, the action hero, has the muscles to prove that you can do those kind of things. So the muscles that they say would never work, became a huge asset. As a matter of fact, John Billius, the director of Conan the Barbarian, said that if honor wouldn't exist, we would have had to build one. And Jim Cameron said the same thing in Terminator. He said, honor made the thing work because he had this physique and he speaks kind of like a machine. And so, it was kind of a compliment in a way, but it, was, it didn't sound like one. But in any case, so all of this, so this is why I say to people in the book, don't pay attention to the naysayers. And whenever you have a big goal, people always will say to you, it's, it's impossible, you will never make that. It's just a fantasy, get out of your dream and all this stuff. But I learned that if you have a dream, and if you have a very clear vision, you go after it, and you can be, stay relentless and chase that dream because it will become reality. If you have faith in yourself and faith in the dream, well, I mean, you have certainly chased a few dreams and made them all happen, and it's amazing. I mean, so many people do have success, maybe not quite as successful. Well, no, it can, because remember, James Bond continued without, uh, you know, Sean Connery. So, it depends all on the writing. I guarantee you that if Jim Cameron 
will take, take over again and create a Terminator without me. I think it could be very successful. So it doesn't need me, it's just that people sometimes can't figure out how to do that. You know, like how many times have you seen a predator that failed, right? Because I was not the leading man in Predator and also the story <laughs> sucked also. So, yeah, it was at the same time. so uh, I think that the last Predator, for instance, was really good. And uh, we did Little Girl, and uh, so I think that that was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed right. it. And so I think it's all about how good is the story? How good is the script? Because it's the old saying, what is not on the page is not on the stage. And this is exactly the way it is. So I think Jim Cameron could uh, revisit Terminator if he has any interest in that or not, I don't know. But I mean, uh, the, the important thing is that there were so many great movies made in the 80s and 90s. As a matter of fact, I just recently did an interview with Stallone, uh, where we both together were interviewed. And uh, we talked about how we created this genre. I mean, think about it, it never ever happened before. And then all of a sudden, you know, there was Sly and me competing throughout the 80s, viciously. I mean, who kills more people on the screen? You know, who has less body fat? Who uses bigger guns? Who uses longer knives? And all this crazy stuff was going on. And uh, we kind of pushed each other, pushed each other to the limit. And, uh, you know, and both of us became very, very successful because we were very competitive. And our movies became very, very successful. And so we were talking about that, you know, how now we are friends and we enjoy this great friendship, but how competitive we once were in the movie business, but how we created at the same time this genre of where you have to have the muscles and you have to show the strength that you're really able to do the things that you're doing on the screen. Absolutely. I mean, you've, your friends also uh, with Danny DeVito, who's been speaking in the press this week, actually, the last few days, saying that you are going to do something together again, but it probably wouldn't be a twin sequel after all. Is that true? Well, uh, no. Uh, so here's the thing. We wanted to do a twin sequel called Triplets. And then the director that was in charge of, that actually directed the first twins, he was in charge of developing this project and he passed away. And his son, Jason. This is Ivan. Ivan Reitman, exactly. So, uh, so his son, Jason, all of a sudden had no interest in continuing this project. But in the meantime, they have the rights to it because he paid for the development of triplets. So therefore, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so, but that does not mean that Danny and I will not, will not do a project together because next year, Danny, DeVito, and I will be doing another movie together. And uh, no two words about that. And he's funny, you know, he was in my, in, in my commercial that I did. Um, just recently for the Super Bowl, uh, and uh, people just love to see us together. And, and uh, you know, we just were at the Oscars together, and we had this whole confrontation with Batman and all the, the, the fun stuff. And so he's just a really, really fun guy. I love the guy from the time that I met him. You know, we really worked well together. He's a sweetheart of a guy, and. Uh, he also one time put marijuana in a cigar. <laughs> and so I, he invited me to his movie trailer to have lunch. He says, I make you good pasta. And so he made good pasta, he made good coffee, he, made good, he gave me a good cheesecake afterwards and everything. He says, oh, now I have some really good cigars. And he had them prepped beforehand and had the marijuana stuffed in there in the front. <laughs> And so I smoked the cigar, and then by the time I got to the set afterwards, uh, I totally forgot my lines. <laughs> I was standing in front of the camera, and Danny was standing right there. We were supposed to do this close-up, and I told you he was hopeless. I looked at him and I said, I don't even know, I don't even know the dialogue. And he says, well, here, let me get the script, and he showed me the script. And so I looked at the script and then I read the lines. 
but they didn't make any sense. It's almost like I've never ever seen them before. So I said, can we turn around? I said, let's do the close-up of Danny. And I stand behind the camera, let's just read off the pages. And so we did that for an hour. Then after an hour, it slowly came back again. Then all of a sudden, I remember the whole thing, scene again. And then we could turn around and then film me. But I mean, that's what Danny did to me. So even though I'm usually the prankster, but this time, the Danny pulled a trick on me. And uh, ever since then, I've tried to kind of do it back to him. But he catches on because he knows what marijuana smells like. You see what I'm saying? So whenever he smells the cigar and he smells any kind of marijuana in there, and like this, he won't smoke it because he knows it's a trick. You have to find something yeah, else yeah, exactly, to catch yeah. on yeah, he's, he's very, Danny is very, very funny. Um, it has been such a joy to chat to you. Arnold is so busy.